I'd like to call this regular meeting of the Coralville City Council to order. It is July 23rd, 2024. Could I have the roll call? Customer Knutson? Here. Vogelzang? Wynn? Here. Peterson? Goodrich? Here. We have three of our five council members with us this evening, so we do have a quorum. And uh, best wishes to Council Member Peterson. He's out ill. Council Member Vogelzang is traveling with us. Uh, or traveling and that's why he's not with us this evening so we have three of our five council members present also the mayor the city clerk the city attorney the deputy city administrator and several other staff in the audience I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda so move moved by Wynn. Second. seconded by Knutson all in favor please say aye aye the agenda is approved next item community comments this is a time for community members to speak to us about, about items that aren't on the agenda or items that are on the agenda but are not subject to a public hearing. Each speaker will have five minutes and we do reserve the right to adjust both the overall comment time and the individual speaking time based on the number of speakers or any accommodations that a speaker might need. And I do think we have some folks that are here to address us this evening. Will you please step up to the microphone? You sign in and uh, tell us your name. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Jerry Fortune. Um, I live at 3158 Scallon Farms Road, Coralville. I'm here with my family, my wife and two kids. Um, the last couple months have been really difficult for my family and I. Um, on May 24th, we experienced a flood, uh, flooding incident at our house. Um, at the time, it wasn't that bad. It was about two feet. Uh, we brought it to the attention of the city. Uh, I talked to the property developers, and I also talked to my uh, homeowner's insurance. Um, all my attempts to get the problem resolved failed. Um, D.R. Horton, the property developer uh, from my neighborhood, essentially said that they had um, constructed a building in accordance to city ordinances and obtain the city um, occupancy permit, which is how they got to sell the house to me. My insurance was saying um, because the flooding occurred from water that originated from outside the property, um, it's not covered, especially because I don't have um, homeowners, uh, sorry, flood insurance. And then, of course, I'm stuck with a bill to clean it up to get everything back into order um, because no one was helping at the time. We went out of pocket and paid uh, Seth Pro to come in and clean the house. Unfortunately, just after a month, after, I think on July 25th, following another short incident of rain, my house was flooded again. This time, um, it was six inches or more of water. We got a fire department to come out and help drain uh, the water. and. I still again reached out to Dear Horton about the same situation and still got the same response to them. As we speak, my house is still in the same condition. Um, everywhere is molding in the basement. Everything in the basement is pretty much destroyed. Um, and it's been really difficult. Um, estimates for cleaning and just um, mitigating for damage is about 9,000. That doesn't include repairs for anything. I tried getting some other estimates for repairs that I got, I think, twenty-nine or $30,000. Um, this is way more than we can afford, um, and we are suffering. My wife is four months pregnant. Um, I live with my mother-in-law and my two, two junior brothers, so we're all cramped up upstairs, and we're suffering. And Dear Horton is not doing anything to help us out, despite many pleas. 
Prior to this, when we moved into the property uh, back in November of 2022, um, my neighbor and I, my neighbors and I complained about water just standing around the yard and they said they were going to come in and do some reconstruction of the flooring and all that stuff, of the uh, regrading of the floor, of the land, sorry. But that never happened. And then um, as time went on, you know, we eventually uh, went out of warranty, which is, I guess, the play they were making at the time. And at the time, those there were two other houses behind mine that were not built at the time, so we didn't get as much water running to the yard. So now we're stuck with this situation where we have all this um, damage to our house, um, loss of property, and loss of use of that section of our house. It's been, I think, almost a month now since that happened, and we're still just struggling to get our feet on the ground to figure out what's going on and how we can navigate the situation. I've been here to the city, uh, city hall or to the city all I guess, and I've talked to a few people. I met with Amy Foster, who I also talked to the mayor, and I met with Amy Foster. I think I met with um, Mrs. Hay over there too. We t and uh, we talked about you know the available resources that I can get, and so far we don't qualify for any. Um, but our problems still remain the same. Now this is particularly bad because you know we are the small guys. When we're living in a structural environment like this one, we expect that there's some, I don't know, rules that people go by. Now, they are hard in the saying, um, because they obtained a certificate of occupancy, it means they did construct the property and the grading, everything was done right. And that, uh, I spoke with one of the um, regional construction managers who said the city gave them an occupancy permit, which is how they got to sell the house. So then they're not responsible for anything that happened. I did talk to one of the, uh, and, uh, the warranty manager who once came out and then saw what was going on. I essentially said the same thing. So we are suffering and they're still making money out there. They're still developing the whole area and they're still building. I don't know about other people's struggles, but I know in my neighborhood there's been plenty of complaints of some other sort that they've been dealing with. So far I only know about mine because I think mine has been the gravest. So what I'm pleading is, you know, for you guys to see how you guys can come out and help me. This company needs to be held accountable as well because, again, they're building everywhere. It's not just in this community. They're building. You travel out to Des Moines and have the, have the way they're building everywhere. You go down to Cedar Rapids, they're doing the same thing. But if they're not building um, houses that, you know, are meant to last long, that are meant to increase our greater enjoyment of the community, and then I guess it's just a scheme to rip us off in the end. So I'm pleading with this uh, committee to help me out, help my family, and you know, prevent this situation from happening from anyone out, uh, out there who is still looking into buying a house or who already is in the house that they constructed. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for coming and sharing your story with us. And uh, as, as uh, he mentioned, he has been in contact with us. I've spoken with him and uh, city staff, my colleague, uh, Councilmember Huynh has as well, so we are continuing to to work on this, and I'm hoping we can we can find some solutions. So thank you for coming and sharing that with the rest of us, and also uh, the public that's watching. We appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Okay. I don't think we have anyone else that. Oh, you would like to speak? Mm -hmm. We do have one more person. <laughs> Sign in. <laughs> you know the drill. <laughs> Seen it once. Shane Crone, currently the police chief. <laughs> Mayor, council, boss, Kevin, Don. It's been a good run. When I was sworn in as police chief, Mayor Lindell asked me if I wanted to say a few words. I did not. <laughs> in keeping with my general philosophy that the police should work outside the limelight, our only objective being to keep the community safe. But I am here tonight, this being my last council meeting, to say goodbye and to thank the many people who helped me realize my dream. So here we go. First and foremost, my family. My mom and dad, Ron and Linda. I know it was in doubt once or twice, but they taught me right from wrong. And I've always known what was expected. My brothers and sisters, Mike, Justin, and Rach, I never knew that not all siblings are best friends, and I'm grateful to them for that. My wife, Marty, and my kids, Anna, Ian, Sam, and Noah, who knowingly or not, agreed to be my partners in this career. 
and suffered the consequences of my absences at birthdays, holidays, special occasions, dinner, in the middle of the night, oftentimes unexpected and without notice. It's not easy being a, wife, a cop's wife or kids, but they had my back when I had ab obligations that had nothing at all to do with them, and they made me proud. To my trainers, mentors, and all the cops, EMS, and dispatchers I've worked with these last 35 years, way too many people to name. I was fortunate to work for and with some of the best in this business. We've been on some terrible calls together, but I always knew we were going to win or lose together. Do good work, come back safe. To the city staff, there is no other team I'd rather be on. And especially Eric at Streets and Orion Fire and Scott in Engineering who remain our partners in public safety. To the citizens of Coralville, people like Barry, Mary, Jacob and Kelsey, Wendy, Kevin and Jack, Dolores, Anita and Ron, Bill, Eve, Lauren, Kevin, Mike, David and Noreen. And to everyone who taught me so much about the relationship between the community and its police and trusted us to do the right thing, even as others were writing some hateful things in our parking lot. My eternal gratitude. And finally, my sincerest apologies to every person for each time we failed to exceed expectations. This is a tough business. I promise you I did my best, and I'm truly sorry when that wasn't enough. At the 2012 Olympic wrestling trials, I watched retiring wrestlers leave their shoes on the mat following their final match as a sign they'd given it their all. I en endeavored to give it my all every day. And so I choose to go out the same way. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor, council, it's been the honor and privilege of my life to serve the citizens of Corville. I never stopped loving this place. And I leave you in quite capable hands. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. It's raining. <laughs> Thank you, Chief, for that and for all of your years of service. And we appreciate you and everything you have done for this community over the last several decades. Thank you so much. Okay. With that, we will move on to the next agenda item. West Village. We have a third reading of an ordinance here, and then we have a couple of resolutions. And these items are for developing a combination of residential and commercial uses located at the southwest corner of Oakdale and Jones Valley Boulevards. All right. And do you have something for us? I don't have anything to add then. Okay. It's been previ previously said. Excellent. Thank All you. right. Thank you so much. All right. So we'll start with the third reading of the ordinance. Ordinance number 2024-1004, an ordinance amending the Coralville Zoning Ordinance, the same being ordinance number 2020-1009 as previously amended, rezoning certain property located within the corporate limits of the city of Coralville, Johnson County, Iowa, and generally known as West Village from C2 Arterial Commercial District and R1 Single Family Residential District to RPUD1 Residential Plan Unit Development 1 District. Introduced to third and final consideration by Councilmember Knudsen, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Goodrich. Any questions or discussion? Yeah, I just wanted to clarify, I've been communicating a little bit with Dave on this um, about the parks I just want to make sure everybody's aware these will not be public parks that are in there including a, a dog park um, just wanted to make sure everybody's aware of that um, and I've floated this idea out a few times um, given the changes in the law I just want to make go on the record as at least considering this option uh, for this for this area um, um, which, which is considering it as a TIF um, moving forward. Um, and I think I've, as, I've, as I look at it, we're using the Oakdale, it's next to Oakdale, it's next to a park that we're working on that we could uh, use this for. 
Um, and the tax advantages we've talked many times about with the new law and limiting growth um, does not affect TIFs. And um, I floated that to a few people, and I just wanted to go on public record as, as, as um, being, at least in general, supportive of that concept. Excellent. Thank you for that. Does anybody else have any comments? Certainly it's something we can discuss for sure. I think we, you know, definitely something to put on the table. Any other comments? Okay. Roll call, please. Councilmember Quinn. Aye. Goodrich. Aye. Knudsen. Aye. Ordinance passes its third and final consideration, okay. all ayes. Okay. Now let's take the first resolution, please. Resolution approving the PUDA site plan for West Village, Coralville, Iowa. Introduced or adopted by Council Member Wynn, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Knutson. Questions or discussion on this item? Okay, roll call. Council Member Goodrich? Aye. Knutson? Aye. Wynn? Aye. Resolution is approved, all ayes. And now for the second one. Resolution approving the preliminary plan for West Village, Coralville, Iowa. <laughs> Excuse me. Introduced or adopted by Council Member Goodrich. Seconded by. Second. Seconded by when? Any questions or discussion on this item? All right. Roll call. Council Member Knudsen. Aye. Wynn. Aye. Goodrich. Aye. Resolution is approved. All ayes. Next item. Clear Creek Stream Mitigation Bank. Final seeding and trees. This project is for the final seeding and planting of trees for the Clear Creek Stream Mitigation Bank project. And the public hearing for this will be on August 13th, 2024. Could I have the resolution? Resolution setting the public hearing for plans, specifications, form of contract, and estimate of cost for the Clear Creek Stream Mitigation Final Seeding and Trees. Uh, introduced or adopted by Councilmember Knudsen, seconded by. Second. Se seconded by when? Questions on this one or any discussion? All right. Roll call. Councilmember Wynn? Aye. Goodrich? Aye. Knudsen? Aye. Resolution is approved all ayes. Next item, ur urban renewal plan amendments. This amendment would add a development agreement with rebates for IR, IRL Parkview Investments for Lot 3, IRL Parkview Plat 3 to the list of urban renewal projects. Consultation will begin on August 2nd and the public hearing will be on August 13th. Could I have the resolution? Resolution setting a date for consultation and a date for public hearing on the proposed amendment number 16 to the urban renewal plan for the mall and highway six urban renewal area. Introduced or adopted by council member Wynn, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Goodrich. <coughs> Questions or discussion on this item? Is this less than what they've been getting previously? Yes, but uh, for this, for the first two buildings, they put all those roads in right now. Right. For this, uh, this one, they're putting a detention basin to the north of the IRL uh, the hotel parking ramp, and then extensions of Iowa River Landing Place on both the north and the south leg. So it's not anywhere near as much as they put in for the first time. First time. So that's why the this is why the uh, rebate is less. It, it was for 20 years for the first ones. This is a 10-year rebate for the. And it was it was 75 percent. Yes, it was. The it was 75 first, for 20. They've all been 75. This yeah, is 10 versus. This is 20. 10 versus 20. Got it. Got it. Sounds reasonable. Thank you. Any other questions? Roll call. Customer Goodrich? Aye. Knudsen? Aye. Quinn? Aye. Resolution is approved, all ayes. Next item, taxi cabs. This ordinance reduces the number of required taxi cabs. Wait, wait, number what eight. I did? Oh, I am so sorry. Thank you. I crossed it off oh, of yeah. my <laughs> Never mind. Sorry. <laughs> yes. Okay, next item, the bonds. These bonds will be used to finance the improvements to the city's hotel and conference center. Okay. Can we have that resolution, please? Resolution authorizing and approving a loan agreement confirming the sale and providing for the issuance of general obligation refunding bond series 2024B and providing for the levy of taxes to pay the same. Introduced for adoption by Councilmember Goodrich, seconded by. 
Second. Seconded by Wynn. Questions on this one? All right, roll call. Customer Knudsen. Aye. Wynn? Aye. Goodrich? Aye. Resolution is approved, all ayes. And finally, taxi cabs. All right, this ordinance reduces the number of required taxi cabs to two and the number of qualified drivers to two. Could I have the ordinance, please? Ordinance number 2024-1005 and ordinance amending chapter 127 of the City of Colville Code of Ordinances 2011 as previously amended regarding taxi cabs introduced for first adoption by Council Member Knudsen, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Goodrich. <laughs> Questions on this item? Why not one? <laughs> we went from we yeah. we talked we talked over and they do have more than one, but I mean, so we went we just cut it from four to two. That was that was a since they're the only existing taxi. <laughs> it wouldn't be a company. <laughs> yeah. But if know, they but go if, down to one, then they it might would as be, well be become an Uber driver. Yeah, yes, <laughs> yes. It's a good point. I kind of get that, but if there's a period of time where they only have one driver and they're trying to find somebody, we're what not, would happen? We're not yeah, going to. Uh, if they're in the process of trying to meet the requirements, we're not going to. Uh, <laughs> so, okay. they didn't ask for more than. No, more they did not. No. Yeah. They didn't um, actually ask for this. They asked about taxi colors. Yeah, yeah. Colors. that's right. It's okay, which we have determined. We didn't is, have anyway. Yeah. yeah. All right. Any other questions on this? <clears throat> All right, roll call. Councilmember Quinn? Aye. Goodrich? Aye. Knudsen? Aye. Ordinance passes its first consideration, all ayes. I would, uh, next item, I would entertain a motion to approve the consent calendar as presented. Madam Mayor, I would like to ask Council to consider a motion to approve the consent calendar as presented, A to double B. Moved by Quinn. Could I get a second? Uh, Mayor, uh, we yes. have, do we do have one change that was oh. in the, uh, for item number T, passed at number five, that will be just to comply with the DOT requirements, $215,894.61. So that would be, in T, that would be the uh, approved passment number five would be 215-894.61. And then every, everything else would be the same. Do we, don't, do we need to amend it or just I, I, it? Is that okay with your, okay. Yes, yeah. okay, yeah, we'll cool. Be. All right. So where were we? Uh, did I get a motion to approve? Yeah. Okay. Did I get a second? Uh, yeah. Second. Okay. Awesome. Roll call. Customer Goodrich? Aye. Knudsen? Aye. Win. Aye. Consent calendar of, uh, is approved. All ayes. All right. Next item. City ad Deputy City Administrator's Report. Good evening. I'd like to um, thank Chief Crone for his remarks and note that there will be a reception for him for his retirement on August 1st. That's next Thursday from 4 to 6 p.m. at Brown Deer Golf Club. And the public's welcome to that. Shane has been on the force since 1990 and has been chief since 2017. He has led uh, the department even prior to being chief during some of their most challenging times. And I think he's always served with his whole heart and I've appreciated him as a colleague. We'll miss him. Then on August 6th from 4 to 5.30, uh, Beyond the Call of Duty, the Beyond the Call of Duty ride is uh, coming to Coralville, and they'll be at Fire Department number one. And this is a traveling group. They bring a trailer that recognizes fallen officers from 2022 and 2023. And so uh, Coralville Sergeant John Williams, who died over the July 4th holiday two years ago, will be recognized as part of this memorial for if people want to come out and pay their respects. And that's on the 6th from 4 to 5.30. And then also on the 6th here at City Hall from 4.30 to 6 o'clock, this is my all police report <laughs> tonight. Um, uh, we're gonna have candidates for the new police chief on the 6th from 4.30 to 6. And all the public is welcome to come and meet and talk and provide feedback. And we'd love to see people turn out and, um, and meet people. And then the biographies for the four candidates will be available on the city website by the end of this week. And that's all I have, Mayor. Excellent. Thank you so much. Mayor's report, you covered uh, most of what I had. Wanted to 
obviously, again, thank Chief Crone for his decades of service. Really appreciate him. I know that it hasn't always been easy. I know that there's been, you know, there is always a lot of challenge with that job that we don't even know or understand fully as members of the public. You know, we, we, it's, it's hard to imagine and what a lot of our law enforcement officers see and deal with on a daily basis. And, you know, they're, they're, they still show up every day. They're here for the community. And, you know, Chief Crone was, is, uh, always very passionate about his work and his service, and we certainly appreciate that. And I, I just have to say that I, I think that Chief Crone maybe needs to become either a paraeducator or like a public school teacher in his, in his retirement because he lights up when he is working with kids. He does the junior achievement thing at Coralville Central or that program. And my son is a paraeducator in, in that class in a classroom at Coralville Central. And he remarked to me one day after work, he said, you know, your chief, uh, police chief, was in my classroom today doing junior achievement, and he seemed like he was having so much fun with those kids. And I told my son, I was like, you know, he, he has said that, that he really enjoys that. And I, I just saw it on the 4th of July, too. He was out with, at the tractor pole just interacting with the kids and just really, really doing a great job of that. The balloon animals, you know, I, so I, I think that maybe he should, he should do that in his free time, but I'm sure he would disagree. He's <laughs> probably like, I've already had one high stress job. Thank you very much. Don't need another one. <laughs> so we appreciate him. And I did have both of the receptions on my list as well. Um, his reception, uh, August 1st, 4 to 6 p.m. at Brown Deer, if you want to stop by and say thank you to Chief for his service. Also wanted to note the open house we're going to have for the Chief candidates. So make sure that you put that on your calendar. Uh, say August 6th, uh, the, uh, the time was 4 to? 4.30 to 6. 4.30 to 6 on August 6th here in our, uh, at City Hall. And I did this the last time when we had the other uh, candidates, when we hired Chief Crone, and it really is a great opportunity to speak with each one of the candidates, learn about you know their background, and uh, as uh, as Ellen said, provide feedback because we are going to have feedback forms, correct? Yes. Yeah, we'll have feedback forms so you can share your thoughts, and you know, of course. You can email any of us as well and share your thoughts with us on this process, and we really encourage that and want, want to hear from you. And then the only other thing that I had on my list was the National Night Out. So that is also on August 6th, <laughs> also on August 6th. And for National Night Out, if you want to host a block party, Please go to the website, the uh, Coralville's website. You can fill out a form there, get more information there. We do a request, or you know, hopefully, if, if you can, we would appreciate it, if you could register your party by July 30th. That way, we know which parties we can go to, and we can kind of split up, and because we always travel around and try to get to all of the parties. So really look forward to that event as well. And that is all I have on my list. City Attorney's Report. Well, all I have is I was wondering what size the shoes are. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Kevin. Oh, I'd just like to say, uh, uh, Shane, uh, I've worked here since 1999 when Luke, or, uh, Chief Crone was Sergeant Crone at the time, when so that's when I met him, and so I've worked with him my whole time here. As we also know, we, he and I are on a refer, football refereeing crew, so we have a lot of fun doing that. And and you th you think that's a high stress job, and people don't like what you say. You should try listening to that some Friday night. So so uh, uh, I just appreciate everything Shane's done. That is not an easy job to do. Uh, he's always talked about how. They know they're doing a good job when they're not in the news and they're 
they just it's just they do their work and nothing it's nothing's noteworthy even though they run into situations every day that could be noteworthy but the the, the officers handle everything with such professionalism in difficult situations that we are blessed that we don't have the problems that we see around the country awesome thank you okay Committee and council members report. We'll start down at this end with council member Goodrich. Thank you. I too want to thank and appreciate uh, our chief crone and hope that he will come back and visit often and, and continue to be involved in all those fun volunteer things too. We do have an event coming up, the fifth street social. We talked about it last, um, last time at our meeting and we won't meet again before August 10th so mm -hmm. just want to remind everyone put that on your calendar that will be a fun fun event on 5th Street and there is a book sale at the Coralville Library the Friends of the Library put that on and that's coming up just in the next uh, weekend August 2nd and 3rd it's Friday and Saturday um, I also wanted to mention that Watermill Kitchen and Bar at the Hyatt received a nice article in the paper, and um, I had mentioned earlier that it's uh, Coralville's um, best kept secret, but I think that the secret is out, and it's really a gem, really a great place to uh, go and enjoy a meal with your family or with friends. Um, just enjoy the watermill kitchen and bar at the Hyatt. And then 8, 808 on 5th it has a co-working office that the uh, Greater Iowa City and Coralville are sponsoring. And it's been there for quite a while, but they have new chairs and tables and just have a great setup. You can um, rent a space there or you can have a time where if you want to meet and collaborate with people, you can... Um, go to their website at, um, I think it's, I just typed in 808 on 5th, Coralville, and um, the co-work um, space. So that's another thing for business entrepreneurs or people that are in business and that, that have questions on how they can be more productive. Um, you can get a lot of information there. That is it. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you. Council Member Wynn. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I do have a few things. Um, so our library, um, I wanted to offer um, my sincere thanks to the library <coughs> staff for continuing to find way to serve the community um, and meet their needs. Um, and so at the last library report, um, I've learned that just last month, June, the library has offered to 418 residents um, who take ELL class, which means a, a, a English as a learning language class. Um, and being as, um, a, a, you know, as diverse as we are in a community, those classes are very important because it's not just you know, learning how to write ABC, but those classes offer the people who take them a way to integrate it into our community. So how do you go to a grocery store? You know, how, how do you buy stuff? How do you pay stuff? How do you take a bus? Um, where do you find resources? Or simply just have a, a everyday conversation. Um, and those classes are on high demands and they are finding that they are needing more volunteer. So if anyone out there who have a little bit of time on your hand and would like to give back, um, and just, you know, really sit down and have a conversation with um, immigrants that come into our community um, and trying to integrate into our community. Contact the, the library and, um, you know, they can set up a time for you to just come in um, at your convenience and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with um, newcomers who come into our community. Um, and then with uh, Kurtwood shut down in Iowa City, we have seen a rising number of folks who needed ELL class, um, and they find out that the uh, Corvette Public Library do offer those classes for free, um, and so those class has been very, very popular. Um, we have a longtime volunteer who teaches that class, um, Dave. He has been wonderful, but he, 
he had filled his schedule to the max. Um, and so he's looking for more people who would like to teach. Um, so again, if you do have some time and you are, um, English is your, you know, your, your, your first language, please consider. Um, yeah. Um, what was that class that you teach? It's called ELL, e -L. so English Learner, yeah, English Language Learner. English language. It used to be called ESL, which is English as a Second Language, okay. but they changed that because many, many immigrants speak more than just two languages. So. Right, sure. <laughs> Um, let's see, I have a whole lot of notes here, so bear with me. Um, Wednesday, so from the Rec Center um, point of view, on Wednesday, August 14, they are doing fall registration. Can you believe that? We are only in the middle of summer and we're already talking mm -hmm. about fall registration. Um, they offer free uh, swimming class, so level one only for uh, five to ten years old, and that classes are very, very popular. It's a way to keep kids from drowning. We know that there are a lot of community who don't have public pool, and so kids don't have a way to learn how to swim. So this is one of the ways to keep those incidents from happening within our community. So if you have a five to ten years old um, looking to learn how to swim, um, the uh, level one classes free, but you have to register very, very quickly because they fill up quickly. And then on the 21st, they offer a uh, recreation pass replacement for free. Um, so if you lose your pass, do come on the 21st and you get them replaced for free. Um, I think they only offer the service uh, once or twice a year, so take advantage of that. Um, and then summer lunch program is still going strong. Um, so if you have kids um, who are looking to really eat with their peers, um, bring them to the Corvo Food Pantry um, any time from 11.30 to 1 o'clock, uh, Tuesday to Friday, to eat um, with their friends and, and family members. And that's all I have. Thank Excellent. you. Excellent. Thank you. Last but not least. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I have nothing novel, but I'll reiterate a couple of points. I also want to thank Chief Crone for his over three decades of service. Uh, a little bit we've worked with him and he's been fantastic. Um, don't hate to contradict you, Mayor, but I'm gonna encourage him not to get a second job right away. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Take a few months off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, reiterate what Lori said. I, I, I maybe sound like a broken wheel with regards to water mill. I've eaten there four or five times now and had great meals. Uh, it's, it's a great venue and, and uh, underutilized and underappreciated and encourage people to, <coughs> to, to use that facility as much as possible. Give it a try. You won't regret it. Thank you. All right. Excellent. With that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So, so move. Second. Moved by Wynn, seconded by Goodrich. All in favor, please say aye. 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 We're adjourned. Thank you.